Life and welcome to our online service. We are so excited that you've decided to join us this morning. So we just want to start off this service with a couple of announcements. Firstly, 19th of June, we have our women's ministry meeting. For more information, you can contact Natasha. For all the gents out there, every second Monday, we have our men's ministry meetings. And for more information regarding that, you can contact Kone. We've started our winter blanket drive. So you can bring all your pre-loved blankets and drop them off at the church if you'd like to donate them to somebody who needs them this winter. Alternatively, you can buy a new blanket with us for 75 Rand and it will go to this amazing cause as well. You can still pay all your tithes online and the links will be on the screen right now where you can still pay your tithes. Alternatively, you can head over to the Word and Life website and there we will give you all the instructions that you may need. But without any further ado, let's head over to the Word. Good morning, everybody. It's so awesome that you decided to join us this morning. I want to just take this opportunity to ask you if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel to head over to YouTube now, click the subscribe button, click on the little bell, and then you will be notified every time we upload a new video. If you haven't liked our Facebook page, then head over to Facebook, click the like button, and you will get to find out what's happening in your church, Word and Life Benoni. So today, before we get into the Word, I just want to ask that wherever you be watching this, that you just bow your heads and let's welcome the Lord into this sermon. Father God, we just want to come to you, and we just want to ask you to just come and bring our hearts in line to receive your Word this morning. Father, we pray that you would just anoint my lips with a call from the altar and that you would give your word life. That I would be able to say this morning that thus says the Lord. Father, we pray that your word would achieve all that it sets out to and that, Lord, you would prepare the fourth soil of our hearts, the good soil, to receive your word this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And amen. So I want to start off my word this morning, continuing in our series, Shine, by asking you a question. Have you ever been to the doctor? And why did you go to the doctor? Uh, because you were sick, because you showed symptoms. So I went to the doctor once and it was a day like any other day and I'd woken up and I'd been experiencing some hectic pain and I found out that my appendix was busy bursting. And I went to the doctor and like everybody else, I went to the doctor to find out what was going on and how can I get better. So in essence, what I'm trying to say is when we go to the doctor, we have a pretty simple agenda. We want to know one of two things or we want to know two things. What is wrong with us and how do we get better or how do we fix it? We're not feeling well and we need help. So in essence, we showed symptoms we don't go to the doctor if we don't have symptoms and if we just look around us the word symptoms today means <laughs> danger for some people it means run for others with everything that we're going through at this time with COVID and all of that so in order for a doctor to properly treat the symptoms the first goal of the doctor is to find out what is causing them Sometimes it's an easy diagnosis. Sometimes we just go for an x-ray. Sometimes we go for a blood test. Sometimes it's just a physical examination. But they need to find out what the root of the symptoms is before they can give us a diagnosis or a prognosis. And this is true for both our physical bodies as well as our spiritual bodies. We need to find out what the cause of a problem is before we can treat the symptoms. I want to share a story with us this morning from Mark chapter 9 and we're going to read from verse 14 to 29 and it says when they returned to the other disciples. Who's they? This is Jesus and Peter and the sons of thunder coming down from the mountain. Um, that's the they in this story. They saw a large crowd surrounding them and some of the, the teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe and they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about? Jesus asked. 
One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that will not let him talk. And whenever that spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. He then foams at his mouth and he grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, You faithless people how long must i be with you how long must i put up with you bring the boy to me so they brought the boy but when the evil spirit saw jesus it threw the child into a violent convulsion and he fell to the ground writhing and foaming at the mouth you see Whatever is intimidating you is also intimidated at the presence of Jesus. So it's a good thing this morning that we decided to get into the presence of Jesus by getting around his word. So that whatever it is in our lives that is working against us, that will be it will start trembling in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Can I get an amen from you there at home? So let's go on in verse 21. Jesus asks, how long has this been happening? He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit throws him into the fire or into water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. You see, friends, this part of the Bible doesn't give us the father's name. It doesn't give us the boy's name. It just lets us know that is that anything is possible to whoever, to anyone who believes. It doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter. It just says anything is possible to anyone who believes. If you're in anyone today, just like I am, then we need to remember that anything is possible. Alles is moendlik. Ons moet net geloof in Jesus sê. Let's read on in, in verse 24. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. The father instantly cried out, sorry, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. He said, listen, you spirit that makes the boy unable to hear or speak. He said, I command you to come out of the child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd and the people said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet and he stood up. You see, friends, what are we going to learn from this story today? We're going to learn that there is a thing behind the thing. It was not the issue. The issue was not the issue. It was the issue behind the issue that was the real issue in this story. It was the father's heart that needed to be changed so that his son could be healed it was not the fact that the son needed to be healed but more so the father's heart so today how can you and i deal with the issues that are causing issues in our lives how can we even start to begin to identify what the thing is that is behind the thing the first thing we have to do is we need to get to the root. You see, as we said earlier, when, when we're sick, the, te- the, the symptoms of our life start to show up a lot earlier than what the problem is, than what the root is. We may face symptoms of anxiety or anger or our marriages may be in distress or our finances may be not that good or our kids may be rebelling or it just seems like everything is going wrong. We lack peace and we long for relief. But where does this issue originate? Where do these problems start? Friends, our great physician, Jesus Christ, gives you and I a good indication of where this starts. Let's look together in Proverbs 4 verse 23, where the word of God says, Guard your heart 
above all else, for it determines the cause of your life. Sorry, the course of your life. It determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. What was the root for the father in Mark chapter 9? It was his unbelief. So when he admitted in his heart that he had unbelief, he was healed. So the word says your heart determines the course of your life. God reveals that the condition of our heart will determine the course of our life. A sick heart, a sick life. A healthy heart, a healthy life. We need to start looking inside of our hearts. We need to know what's going on inside of us. And we need to start checking our hearts and weighing our hearts against the word of God. Matthew 12 verse 35 says, A good man brings forth the good out of the good that is stored up in his heart. Whereas evil men will bring forth evil things out of the evil that is stored up in their hearts. So if God says that we have something stored in our hearts and he tells us to guard our hearts, then this might tell us something about the human heart. And friends, what I think this is telling us this morning is that the human heart is valuable. Because when we don't guard something that's not worth guarding, when you take your trash out in the morning, you put your trash out, you walk away, you don't sit and think about it and go back to it every day and go and check and see how it's because it's meaningless. It's trash. But you're not going to go and leave your wedding ring on the side of the street and just be all nonchalant about it and non-caring about it. You're not going to go and draw your salary and give it to your five-year-old to play shop shop. We protect it. We look after it because it is valuable. Your heart is of high value. Friend, you and I, we need to, ons moet ons harte oppas. We need to look after our hearts because our hearts are valuable and God says that we should guard our hearts. But why? Why do you think that God says, besides the fact that they are valuable, why do you think that God says we should guard our hearts? Because our hearts, friend, is under attack. You and me, our hearts are under attack. Just like a bacteria or a virus can attack our physical bodies, there is a real assault on our spiritual, on, on our spiritual body or our spirits and our hearts. The very natures of the word guard your heart indicate that there's something that's going to try and attack it or something that's going to try and come against it. So we need to guard our heart above all things. The Bible is clear that you and I have enemies. First Peter 5 verse 8 says this, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for somebody to devour. Ephesians 6 verse 12 says, For we are fighting not against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of an unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Friends, we need to guard our hearts from attack. Our hearts are also sick. So not only do we face enemies around us, but God reveals perhaps that the greatest battle that you and I go through is from within. Happens within our own hearts. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says, The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? You see, friends, you and I have a problem. We have a heart problem. Mark 7 verse 14 to 15 and then verse 21 to 23 says the following. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and try to understand. It is not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes out of your heart. Wow, friends, we've got something to think about today. What is coming out of your heart? What kom uit your heart vandaag? What is your heart full of? What is stored up in your heart that comes out at the first sign of trouble? Let's read verse 21 to 23 where it says, 
for, for from within, out of a person's heart, comes evil thoughts. What evil thoughts is the word of God saying come out of our hearts? Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. So now we've got to think about it. We've got to think about our hearts. We've got to think about the problems that we're facing and see if the problems that we're facing are mere symptoms of a more hearted issue. We're going to have to start looking at our hearts. We're going to have to ask God to come into the innermost part of our hearts and reveal to us what is going on in our hearts. I believe if we misunderstand the root of our problem, we might miss true and complete healing. If we don't isolate what the true root cause of the problem is, you and I are going to miss true healing. You see, it's like trying to treat cancer with a plaster. It's just never going to work. You know, many of us Christians take as a first line of defense, we try to address our thoughts, we attack our thoughts, and um, we try to attack the symptoms. But Jesus told us that these sins and these sinful desires come from our heart and not from our heads. Our hearts are ground zero. And if we're not careful, we will make a common mistake of tap- tackling the symptoms but missing the heart. You see, it's good and we have to overcome the thoughts that get into our minds. But that would be the first line of defense. If the problem is already here, we need to see why. We need to start digging inside and we need to start asking God, Here, wees vir my wat gaan aan in my heart. Wees vir my waarheid ek verkeerd geloop. En wat moet ek doen om gezond te word? You know, we become uh, aware of our messed up thinking problems we face, but we never stop to examine What's behind our messed up thinking or our problems? We set on a mission to deal with our symptoms and not our heart. And this, friends, leads us into two traps that I want to share with us today. The first one is a more knowledge trap. So we set on a knowledge quest. We read self-help books. We read every book that we can. We, we seek in content, 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 more. Get in, more in. We want to understand self-help, um, how to do this in five days, how to do this in six days. We just want more information so we can follow the information. Many of us even turn to the Bible and go to multiple Bible studies and, and do this and read this and, and, and do this. And, and that's good for us. But sometimes we just don't see results. You know, knowledge of the word of God is important. And don't get me wrong, that's not what I'm, I'm not trying to say that getting God's word in is not good. But we need to discover the truth that God has for us first as to the source of our problems. Or anything that we get in is just going to fall on deaf ears. It's going to fall on a soil that's not ready to receive it. So we need to ask God for revelation about his word and revelation about our problem. And to see what the root cause of our problem is, our heart And then all of these things will work. If we don't, we must be people who discover God's truth uh, that he has for us so that we can identify the false beliefs that lead us to pain and heartache. But more knowledge, friends, is never going to be the answer. So that's the first trap that we fall into, seeking knowledge and not seeking God to be the source and the provider of the the, the problem that we have or the solution to the problem that we have. The second trap is more willpower. When it comes to sin in our life, we determine that we just need to get more self-control. We begin the quest to obey God and take every thought captive that comes into our head. We fight to replace the false with the truth. We determine that we will not give in to destructive patterns of behavior of our past, yet we continue to fail. We cry out in desperation, wondering why God are we still failing? Why is nothing working? Why do we keep repeating the same behaviors? But until we deal with the root of the problem, we will find ourselves exhausted. We will find ourselves frustrated and we will find ourselves defeated. We have to get to the root of the problem. 
We need to go on a journey to find out what the real problem is. 1 John 1 verse 9 says to us, But if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wickedness. Friends, I want to, I want to share you another story with you from the Bible uh, about a man named Naaman. That was told by the prophet. So before he was told by the prophet. Okay. Naaman was a, a man who had leprosy. He was a general in the army. He was a well-respected man. But he was a leper. And he was told by the prophet of God to go and dip himself in the Jordan River seven times. And that he would be healed. And like most of us do. Like you and I do on a daily basis. When God tells us to do something. We complain. So what Naaman did is he was like. But why the Jordan River? I mean, we hear about the Jordan River all the time, but the Jordan River was not the most desirable river in the world. It wasn't the best place. So he was like, why should I go to that place? I mean, just think of somewhere that you don't like going and somebody tells you, no, you must go there because that's where your healing is going to be. And you're going to be like, but this place is better. Why can't I go here? So Naaman goes down to the river after being convinced by his friends to go. And I mean, he didn't want to. And they said, what have you got to lose? You know, if the prophet of God said that you should do it, you have not nothing else has worked. Why don't you go and try it? So he goes and he tries it and he goes and he dips himself once in the river and he comes up and he's obviously looking. And how many times do we do that? There's something that we're trusting God for. There's something that we're praying and asking God to do for us. And we like we pray and then we open our eyes and we want to look for it. And I think that that's what Naaman did. And he went down a second time and he came up and he would look and, and we pray a second time and we ask God a second time and we look around and still no healing, still no job, still no marriage being saved, still no children being obedient. And Naaman goes down a third time and a fourth time and a fifth time. And I think by the fifth time, he must have started getting a little bit anxious because nothing was happening. And, and, and you and I get anxious because nothing is happening and we praying and we trust him and we praying and we trust him and we asking and we looking and we searching and nothing's happening. And the sixth time he goes down and I'm sure he thought to himself at that moment, if I go down one more time. And I come back up and I'm not healed. I'm going to walk away. Then I, I've wasted my time. And I think some of us get to that point in our lives where we, we've prayed and we've prayed and we've prayed and we've prayed. And, and, we, and, we, and we just want to give up. We just feel like this is never going to work. Am I ever going to get my healing? Am I ever going to get the job? Or is my family ever going to be restored? Is my child ever going to get off drugs? Can it ooit verander? Can I meer anhou? Can it werk as ek anhou bid? And, and friends, I want to tell you today, uh, how on om te bid. Keep praying. Keep looking. Because Jesus, the source and provision of your life, is going to step in like never before. And He is going to help you. And He's going to heal you. And He's going to give you every Thing that he promised you because all of his promises are yes and amen it will come to pass whatever jesus said and just like naaman on the sixth time got up again look nothing had happened he obviously said to himself i'm going to try one more time i'm going to go down in this one more time give jesus just another chance if you felt like you want to give up i'm here to tell you today do not give up Keep on fighting. Keep on pressing on. If you get to the bottom of your rope, tie a knot and hold on. Hold on with your teeth. Hold on to the hem of Jesus' garment because he's going to break through for you. And just like Naaman, on the seventh time when he came up, he was cured of leprosy. You will be cured of whatever is holding you back if you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, the author and pioneer and perfecter of your faith. But only those who complete the race get a prize. Only those who hold on and keep on fighting and trusting in Jesus will get their breakthrough. Just like Naaman, friends, don't give up. So on the seventh time he comes up and he's healed. And the Bible goes on to say that he wasn't just healed of leprosy. His skin became like that of a baby. God didn't only heal him. God restored him but i have to get back to our sermon now and ask us why ask, maybe you're asking why am i sharing this with you because you see friends there was also 
an issue behind an issue when it came to Naaman. Naaman's issue wasn't that he had leprosy. That was just a symptom of a heart condition. And the heart condition that Naaman had was pride. Because when he got over his pride and he went and dipped himself in the Jordan River, he was healed. He was restored. He was made new. So friends, I want to tell you, what is the thing behind the thing? You see, friends, God is our creator and the great cardiologist of our soul. He has the ability and the power to forgive our sins and to heal our lives. He loves us and he desires that he would be our first love. We must go to him with our sick places. We must ask him to re reveal the root of the pride and lust and selfishness and envy and bitterness and adultery or any other sin that is making our hearts sick. Confession of sin to God unlocks healing in our lives. When it comes to living this life, I've come to believe that the healthiest people around are those who realize how sick they are and run to the Savior. Run to Jesus because He is our only healer. He is our only source and our only provision. No matter what is going on in our hearts, no matter what is going on in our lives, we need to find out what is the thing behind the thing. We need to let our hearts be able to be healed so that we can shine the love of God radiating from our hearts. Remember the word said, what a good man brings forth good things out of the good stored up in him. So let it be said of you and me that we will always run to the Savior, run to Jesus to get our hearts checked and our hearts cleaned from all defilement so that we can bring forth good things and shine his love to the ends of the earth. He is our healer. There is no more room for wallowing in shame and condemnation. I'm sick and that is a fact. I have a thing behind the thing and that thing is my heart and it is my heart that needs to change friend and it is your heart that needs to change today. So let's allow God to shine his light in our sick places. Let's deal with it. Let's move on and let's be healed in Jesus mighty name. So friend you might be sitting there today and you might be saying so how do I get a new heart? Well, that's the easy part. We need to go to the Father. Let's go to the Word. Let's read in Psalm 51 verse 10 to 13 where it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. That's how we're going to change our hearts, friends. We need to take our hearts to Jesus. Let him shine his marvelous love on it and let him create a clean heart within you and within me. We cannot do it without Jesus. And now you know the how. But I want to leave you with this thought. The why. Why do we need a new heart? We read in John 6 verse 38 to 40 where it says, and this is Jesus speaking. He says, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. Verse 40, for my father's will is that everyone who looks up to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise them up on the last day. Friends, it's all about souls. That's why you and I have such a big task set in front of us to renew our hearts, to get 
behind the issues that we have, to sort out the thing behind the thing, to get a new heart, to get the heart of God. For the heart of God is that not one soul should let, let, be led to go astray. Not one person should die without coming to salvation knowledge of Jesus Christ and knowing Him as Lord and Savior of their lives. Friends, we need a new heart so that we can adopt God's heart for His people. So let that be our prayer for this week. That God, You work in our hearts. That You give us Your heart. That You work in our hearts to give us Your heart and create a new heart in us. Let's go out this week, friends, and everyone that we meet and everyone that we see, let's see them as the precious souls that God has put before us. And let us through the renewing of our hearts, the renewing of our, our, our minds, the renewing of who we are as a person through Jesus Christ, through Him creating a new heart in us, let us love these souls and let us point these souls to Jesus. So your work this week is to take your sick places, your heart, the thing behind the things, which is your heart, to Jesus and let Him create in you. A new heart. Let us pray. Father God, I pray for everybody hearing this message that you would create in us a new heart. Father, that you would create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Father, that you would give us the heart of God, that you would bind our hearts to the heart of Jesus, that we can love souls and love people the way you have loved us. And we can go and make disciples of all the nations, go and bring people into your kingdom, Father God, for it is your heart. And as we read here, that it is the will of him who sent me that you should lose not one, not one of the people, Father. So give that as a, as a purpose in our hearts and help us this week as we go out to shine our light, to shine to every part of the world, to shine your love, Father God, to a broken and dying world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more prayer I want to pray with you today. If you've heard this message and you've heard of this Jesus who wants to create in you a new heart and you haven't had an opportunity before to give your heart to Jesus, then I invite you this day to pray this prayer out loud with us and to give Jesus an opportunity to come and live in your heart, to change your heart, to renew your heart, and that you, your soul, may know that when you're when you die one day, that you will wake up in the courts of heaven, that you will wake up in the presence of Jesus. Because the only way that we're gonna get to wake up in the presence of Jesus is if we give our hearts to Him now while we are still on earth. The Bible says, work while it is still day, because a night is coming where no one can work. And then it will be too late. If that's you today, friend, and you want to give your heart to Jesus, then pray this prayer with us. Father God, this day, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my everything. Forgive me of all the sins that I've ever committed. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. Even though I may be stained as red as crimson, your blood washes me as white as snow. I believe that Jesus died, that he rose again on the third day, ascended back to heaven, now sits at the right hand of the throne of God, interceding for me, praying for me, loving me. Thank you, God, that I am your child and my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Forever and ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, if you prayed that prayer with us this morning, I want to ask you to head over to our website and just fill in a form. Say, I want to connect with my pastor and we will get back to you. We want to walk this journey with you and we want you to become built in as a living stone. As God says, we need to be built in into a spiritual house, working as a body together. We want to congratulate you for the decision you made today and we want to thank you for the, um, we want to, we don't want to thank you, sorry, we want to thank you, but we want to celebrate with you, with the whole of heaven, because the word says that when one person gives their life to Jesus, the whole of heaven throws a celebration. So we celebrate with you today. And until next week, we want to say, have a great week.
Bye.